Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I am LD of DotaCommentaries.com. Joining me is Gods of GosuGamers.net and, of course, one of the main people behind this tournament and Beyond the Summit. And I believe we are all set to go. This is the Beyond the Summit World Tour, our second best out of three of the day. Game two of Complexity versus Ehome. Game one was a rather... It was a back-and-forth game. Not the most action-packed one, but ultimately Ehome just slowly and steadily strangled out Complexity. Seized incremental advantages and used it to take that win. Gods, are you with me? Looks like Gods is not quite there. Maybe his microphone is muted, uh, but he should be back soon. Either way, Ehom on the dire, Complexi on the radio, and there we go. QQQ reconnects. So we have ourselves a game. Uh, looks like Ehom off the bat banning that Beastmaster. Interesting to see him ban it. It's definitely here a Complexi run in the past. Uh, a bit more frequently, we'll see him ban when you're up against the Western team. If that Beastmaster would be on the dire side, because it allows them to stack ancients, it's something teams like Complexity and a lot of the other Western, European, and American teams love to do. Uh, still, it's remaining. a pretty slow draft to start things off. And one hero that we saw getting banned out, uh-oh, QQQ Five having some issues. Remaining. But one hero we saw getting banned out last game was Tiny. It's one of TC's signature heroes. And I felt like in that game, Complexity just didn't have an answer for the Panda, and that's why we see him banned right away. Uh, once he got his Blink Dagger, his early arcade moves up, there was just nothing he could do. Dire team Lashrak will be the band to follow, so another hero that gives you some team fights, some great pushing, Radiant and no surprises band. here, Lycan will be banned out, and I believe Gods has some volume coming our way again, so Gods, your thoughts yeah. on the draft so far? Finally we have game two going, so yeah, a little round of applause, a bit of a cheer is in order. Well, a bit of a cheer, and here come the, the not so cheers, is that the fact that I'm not actually in the game, that's what I was trying to convey over to Tusky. Okay. Um, well, maybe... And after all the delays and whatnot, I'm not sure if we're going to remake or not. Uh, I certainly hope we do. Uh, but it has been a bit of an issue getting these lobbies up Let's and running. Oh, that would be a shame if you can't make it for this game. You could commentate with two minutes delayed, man. That's always an option. <laughs> I, you, I remember uh, Toby and Cinder used to do that. It was like a 20-second delay or something. But uh, it's, it's been done before. Yeah, it's a bit harder. Yeah, we're going to ask We'll ask with the teams. If they agree, we'll, we'll go with it. Okay, either way, for now, I will fill you in on the draft. Complexity, no surprises here. They ban out the Panda, which gave them so many problems last game. So we're not going to see that quick blink clap ultimate combo that dominated early team fights for Ehome. Complexity also goes ahead and bans out Lashrak and Enigma. Another strong pushing, two strong pushing heroes, I should say, as well as a lot of team fight to boot. Whereas for Ehome, it seems like the bans, of course, these heroes are always great, but a bit more focused on the pushing heroes. They're going to ban out a Beastmaster with that Enerby Star as well as the Axis, plus a Lycan throw. Heroes that always see bans, especially the Lycan. This is going to leave a lot of strong heroes in the pool. Prophet, Invoker, perhaps two of the more likely ones to be picked up. Queen of Pain as well. Nowadays, gods, there's just so many great heroes in the pool. You really can't ban them all, and so either you try and ban out as much as you can, or you take the alternate approach and leave as much available. Especially if you have that second set of picks, you can get yourself something you like. Yeah, and uh, another thing that I mean, teams are really starting to develop their own style. But with their styles, I mean, you see with I mean, you see with complexity, you see with teams like MTW. If they get one of their sort of heroes they prefer banned out, they always have a a favored backup hero. They, if they don't get one option, they'll go with their alternative, and they really have their strategies down packed. And you can really see how they're going to be playing, especially building up towards the international. They'll have a few sort of pocket strategies. They'll have a few things. Uh, up their sleeves, but for the most part, they'll be going with the style that they're most comfortable with, and that has been proven to work time and time again. Well, we'll have to see what the first picks coming out of this draft are. Uh, I want to mention Lone Shirt is available. I believe he was banned last time, and it's a hero Ehome have definitely run in the past. They love that sort of timing push, Ten getting the early towers, remaining. and then using that advantage to snowball into a 30 40 minute attempt to go high ground. And Lone Druid, one of the very best in the business for doing that. Off the bat, Complexity gets a profit. Uh, and boy, this could, this is a hero that can always cause issues. I think it's hard. It's going to be hard to top Zhao 8's performance earlier today in LGD uh, versus Tongfu, but you know, we'll have to see if Complexity <laughs> can pull that off. Even a, even a profit that's not that dominant still brings a lot to the table. Yeah, and Complexity normally like to run it uh, on Fluff in the jungle. Uh, they'll still they'll, they'll go with sort of a 2-1-1 setup, similar to what they, they, they've done the last games. Instead of a Chenner Enchantress, will just be Prof in the jungle. He does play it a bit more farm-oriented as opposed to the Enchantress, where it's looking to get some early towers, early kills, 
we saw complexity game that's very too fast towers that last game, but it didn't really pay off them in the long run. It just sort of led to bounty hunting, getting some safer farm and XP. So maybe it wasn't the decision that game, although it did give them a bit of a boost to their early game gold. Oh, there you go. Big reply from Ehome. They got the Chen and the Lone Druid. Well, I mentioned push, but this is some big push Ow. coming out from Ehome. Right off the bat, maybe we'll even see something like a Pugna to complement this, especially if Complexity go for those casting heroes, the Queen of Pain being one that they love to run. Uh, that uh, Pugna is definitely here that can punish that, also with his Nether Ward, also brings a lot to the table with pushing with Nether Blast. So it's a hero we've seen Ehome run occasionally before. Uh, of course, there's a lot of other options. The Windrunner is available. It's a hero that both teams like to run. Bounty Hunter as well. We saw it last game. Very effective in the offlane. Although if you want, Lone Druid can certainly fill that role. Mike, I'm going to be curious to see how does Complexity try to deal with this Chen Lone Druid combo? Do they go for push of their own? Do they try and gank? Uh, you Tidehunter is a hero they love to run. You talked about that last game. Do they try and go for the big team fight? We'll have to see, but he's not going to offer much in those early stages. And Well, it might be some quick towers for Ehome, depending on how Complexity drafts. Yeah, the Chinese teams, they don't normally run that Lone Druid as a sort of a suicide soul. They're more likely to put it in mid or even in the safe lane, gain some farm. So we'll see. Uh, we'll have to see how Ehome want to play that and who is actually going to be on it. It's been King J recently playing that hard support role. It seems that Ehome are finally sort of figuring out some roles for their players. That was always a bit of an issue when they first formed them, and they had some, at first, great results, then some very inconsistent and mixed results. It's just they didn't really have the roles and the, their strategies down pack, but it seems now with King J and the captaincy, they have got that a bit more lined up, and we'll see who is going to be on that lone druid. Maybe here that land M will be playing, but uh, interesting to see how they want to land this and what, they, what else they want to get if they want to go all out with this push. Mm. Well, the response from Complexity... Sand Cane plus Enchantress. So once again, we see the Enchantress versus Chen matchup, and I'm very curious how will it play out this time. The one thing you have to keep in mind, though, is there's a Prophet on the field this time, and Prophet can completely turn the tides of those early ganks. Chen is very gankable. If you want to go offensive jungle, you can certainly have the Prophet TP in, especially if he's soloing. I mean, you mentioned he might be jungling, but with the Enchantress pickup, I think we're a bit more likely to see him in one of those solo positions, trying to get the early levels up. Uh, and that means if he does do that, then they're going to have a lot of opportunities to pick off the Chen. Also, Lone Druid. He's a hero, at, he, as tanky as he is at level 6, before he gets to level 6, he is very gankable. So, Complexity going for some push of their own, as well as a very strong early game presence. Uh, maybe, you know, going for some early kills. Yeah, and I um, mean, interesting that they picked up the Sand King there in the second slot. Um, shows that it's a hero that they really think can deal with the Lone Druid well, or maybe just deal with that push that could be coming from Ehome. Uh, they normally would go for that Tide Hunter. The Sand King, I, I, I'm one of those big Sand King advocates. I love what it does in those team fights. Being able to stun multiple heroes multiple times, not just the big wombo combo from the Tide Hunter Ravage. That's so reliant on, and it's not a very mobile hero. I mean, we saw last game, and I couldn't always get in position for those because he just got to walk in. He just he had a pipe, he had arcane boots, he had some decent farm and items, but he just got kited around and outmaneuvered by Ehome, who had like three four staffs on their team. So right. it, it it does make Sand King a nice pick to have instead of Tidehunter when you're up against teams you play like that. And you know the other thing about two gods is you gotta get six first when you're tied in. Well, seconds. Sand King's yeah. pretty. I mean, his stun at level one very short range, but. Once he gets level 3, level 5 on the hero, and 2 or 3 points into the burrow strike, he could be a real presence. We saw Tide's Ravage was delayed. That's how Ehome got the early towers. So another benefit to that Sand Kid. He comes online a lot earlier than the Tide Hunter, and maybe that's what Complexity has in mind. We enter the second stage of the bands, and Windrunner is the band for Complexity. Tiny, once again, getting the, sec the second stage band from Ehome. A lot of respect being paid towards TC. Yeah, I mean, they, they must have versed that on a number of occasions. And I, I think against Complexity, it's as smart as any. It's not a hero they'll, they'll normally pick up in the first few picks unless they, unless they consider a match to be of utmost importance and they really want him on that tiny. Then they might pick up in first three just to avoid it getting banned. But for the most part, they're going to go for that in their fourth and fifth slot and teams are catching on, banning it out. So we'll see what they want to go for instead. Queen of Pain last game didn't really pan out for them and I feel if they'd gone for that morphing, they would have been in a better position with all that farm on a hero, Queen of Pain, unable to have the impact, and Morphling could have maybe done a bit more there, I feel. Yeah, and one other thing to consider about the Queen of Pain pick, you're up against a Chen, as well as a hero that's very tanky in the Lone Druid. So, if Queen of Pain doesn't have a really good start, it might not be enough burst damage. Now, this time around, you can combo it up with Sand King and the Prophet ult, so it's a bit more early game teamfight for Complexity, I want to say. Uh, last game, they had a Crystal Maiden, they had an Enchantress, uh, and I forget, and there was an, a Wex Invoker, who's not too much burst damage early on, so... 
If Complexity want to go for Queen of Pain, maybe it'll fit better, but against Chen, going for that burst damage is kind of a risky proposition. If you can get the burst off, kill the Chen off, then it's great. But if you don't, then he turns the tide of the fight. And suddenly a fight that would have been a win for your team is a huge loss, so... It, it can be a good pick, but it has a lot of potential to backfire. Uh, we'll have to see... It'll... Chaos Knight, actually, I don't know if he was banned or picked last series, but he gets the ban here. And I mention that because it just reflects how many good heroes there are nowadays. Uh, you can't keep track of them all, whether you're a pro team. I mean, you can look through the hero roster, uh, and they do a great job yeah. of counterpicking, but something has to get through. Great. And this time it won't be the Broodmother. She gets banned, but Bounty Hunter available again. Maybe Ehem will go for it another time. It certainly worked out well last time around. And I like it against, I mean, it does well. It's hard to gank for an Enchantress. I mean, if you can get those Sentry Wards early on, but Bounty Hunter has the movement to outrun them. And, I mean, Enchantress, you're relying on a creep to maybe sun them down. They've got a Sanking this time to add... And a general disable. Um, it, for me, I'm actually interested. Is this going to be a farming sanking, or are we going to see a support sanking? And I would, I would lean towards a farming or sort of a solo lane sanking. I'm not sure how they like to do this. Whether it's going to be Hannah in the side lane solo, or they put someone like Geo on him in the mid lane. But I think they would want him to get in a nice farm. Get try get out the fast arcane boots into a blink dagger. Well, complexity definitely want to be aggressive early, guys, because they just picked up Venomancer, one of the best offensive uh, aggressive support staff at level 1. Venomous Scale is such a good skill for getting those early kills. Also a great anti-pusher, and against Chen alone Druid, another reason to pick this hero up. But you throw Prophet into the mix, Enchantress, Venomancer, Sand King. Complexity, if they want to go for early kills, they can do so. And they're up against heroes you can kill early, Invoker, as well as Lone Druid. Until Invoker gets a point of Wex, you can easily pick him off. And even if he goes into Ghostwalk, if you have Sentries or Dust, he's not going to be able to escape. And same for the Lone Druid until he gets 6. He's an easy pick-off. Earthshaker is the pick from Ehome. Sensing the aggression of complexity, also wanting some teamfight anti-push of their own, they're going to respond with the Earthshaker. And, well, I like this pick a lot. You you have heroes that need to get to the mid-game, Lone Druid and Invoker, before they're truly effective. Earthshaker is one of the best heroes to help get you there. Oh, yeah, and I feel now's the time where, I mean, well, for like, Ehome, they need to pull out some kind of utility here, get something like a puck, something that can go get a few levels and just have a nice effect on the game. Be either a town again, can set up some kills for them and really just help them out, survive that mid game aggression or even the early game aggression from Cole. And we'll see what Cole will get as their last. It sounds like they need some kind of carry, semi carry to sort of fill that void. Um, and we'll see what they want to go with. I mean, you mentioned here is like Juggernaut, Queen of Pain, they play, but I feel still it's, it's just got to. Uh, Morphling seems to be the hero that just doesn't really seem to ever fail or disappoint him. Mean, he loses games, don't get me wrong, he loses games. But it never seems to be, oh, they lost because Morphling was a bad pick. Morphling well, always has a positive impact on these games, it well, seems. Go well, Gods, you may not have cast in a, a couple of weeks. It was something we were talking about in the pregame. Is, uh, you know, Gods had himself a bit of a break from Cassie, but his prediction skills have not rusted at all. It is a Morphling for complexity. I am curious, how will oh, Ehome respond? So are they going to try and fight the late game? No, it's the Pugna for them, so I guess I had a, a bit of sense too. And Well, a lot of push for Ehome. The Pugna... Gonna be a great hero to counter off that Venomancer, the Sand King Epicenter. Even if he channels it, the, the Nether Ward will prevent the blink in, so maybe a Force Staff would be an alternative. And, well, Eho wants to push. It's very obvious now. Pugna, Chen, Lone Druid. They have a bit of control, a bit of teamfight in the Invoker and the, the Earthshaker, but they're not gonna win this ultra late game. Generally, Morphling, especially with the Prophet backup, is gonna take it there, assuming equal farm. So for Eho, they want the towers, they want the early control. It's a clash in styles. and. Well, it's East versus West. I feel it's only fitting that we have ourselves a clash in styles. How will this one shake out? Gods, do you have a favorite going into the, the this game? It's, it's game number two, and, well, Ehome took the first one. Do you think they're going to do it again? Ten seconds. I like the Morphling pick. I feel it works a lot better than the uh, the Queen of Pain pick. I mean, I called Complexity winning last game, but I'm going to call Complexity winning this game once again on the back of... Pair for battle. Welcome, everybody, to your final, well, not your final, but your, your second best out of three of the day. It's game number two, Complexity versus Ehome. This is the Beyond the Summit World Tour, only our fifth of 24 best out of threes. Ehome took game one. They have the 1-0 lead. They need this win to secure a series victory. Otherwise, if Complexity take this game, we'll have ourselves a game three. Ehome on the dire. Complexity on the Radiant. I am LD of Dota Commentaries.com, and joining me, of course, is the illustrious, wonderful, fantastic, fabulous gods himself, the man behind the tournament. I was expecting a few more adjectives there. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a bit disappointed, LD. Oh, uh, what can I say? I, I'm sorry, gods. 
<laughs> and I, I will not struggle to run out of adjectives to, des to describe this match, so I feel. E-Home up against Complexity. I am excited. This is going to be game number two. Complexity did fall in game number one, but they've got some slight adjustments to their plan here, some slight adjustments to their strategy. Not running with the Tidehunter this time around. They have got uh, the Prophet as well as the Morphling in their hands. San can kind of replace the Tidehunter, I should say, and we'll see how things work out for them this game as uh, this is going to be a fairly different E-Home style of lineup. They've got the Lone Druid, Invoker, and Pugna. I mean, this is a bit of an interesting myth. They've got a lot of mid-game pushing power, and they're going to be looking to sort of um, just basically get their, use their laying advantage to take it to the mid-game where they try have a bit of a farm advantage and then take some towers, I feel. Yeah, you know, one thing that could really help them out is if Lamb goes for double Forge Spirit. That's an option for him now. He's got a point and exhort. I will int introduce Complexity real quickly here, but it looks like we might have a very early engagement. Ix Mike leading the way. Gale available to use defensively, and he will back off, spots the Spirit Bear. TC on his carry roll, playing the Morphling. Looks like they might offensive tri-lane here. Not entirely sure. It could be a pseudo tri-lane. Fluff and stuff, maybe offensive jungling. Pair of Observer Wards already picked up. We'll have to see if they make some adjustments. J.O. playing that Prophet. This is a very decked out Prophet, by the way. He's looking pretty pimpin'. He'll be headed mid and representing the USA proudly he is. Hannah Montana, instead of the off lane, it looks like he'll be headed bottom, but still taking that solar roll. And you guys, you wanted to see a stand K with some farm. Looks like we are going to see that, as he'll be matching up against... Well, who will he be matching up against? It looks like maybe an Exhort and Poker? No, it's going to be King J. No, is it? I am confused. No, it looks like Lamb is going to head down to the bottom lane. Interesting. I so guess they're it. maybe anticipating these lanes. I mean, they must have anticipated these lanes if they're going to send the Invoker bottom. It looked like it was maybe going to start at mid and they switched things up last minute when they sort of scattered out some of these lanes and they said, OK, Invoker up against Sanking bottom. That's going to be good. I mean, it's a good matchup for Invoker, but not one he'll dominate, especially with the safe lane for Sanking. He should get some decent farm. So we'll see how Hannah, Hannah does there. As uh, the mid lane profit against Lone Druid, we'll probably see Geo go for some early gains here. Lone Druid can only get so farmed in the early stages. I mean, you don't want to give him complete another free farm, but he's not going to be pulling out a six or seven minute relic. So it's good to get your team some few early gains and get the ball rolling. You know, one thing I want to point out about Ehome is that this pug guy would normally be quite vulnerable, but he's got Earthshaker protecting him, and Fissure is probably the best spell in the game to have against the hero. Like Enchantress, going for those early dives. So I like this decision. Put the Pugna up top instead of in the middle lane. That way you can give him the support. Uh, and Lodra can stay a bit farther back, use the bear to scout. Bear can also be used to deny runes, uh, and or as well as pick them up for the hero. So, and, oh, I have action top. I said MMY would be protected, but it's not enough. He gets brought down. Gale as well as a waveform. That'll do it. Plus a centaur stomp on top of it. And, well, Complexity have that kill power early on. It's the Venomancer Morphling. This is something you probably wouldn't see out of a Queen of Pain in this position, but Morphly definitely can do that damage. Yeah, now that's one of those things. I mean, you've got the defensive fissure, but with the, the Venomous Gale being one of the longest level one slows, the waveform to sort of outmaneuver the fissure, and then just Enchantress. I mean, you've got the creeps which can sort of force a preemptive fissure. It's going to be still possible to get those kills, especially if Chen isn't there nearby and ready. ES does need to be careful with his own positioning as. Enchantress with the double creep here is going to be looking for some aggression. Ooh, not going to scout this Pugna here, but not going to see too much happening. As this top lane definitely looking like a place where we'll see some action brewing. Especially if Geo looks to come TP top soon, which I feel he might. He's got the level 2 tree, so he'll probably get Sprout at level 4 and then look for a gank at top, followed up by maybe even a very early T1 tower push. Yeah, if he does do that, it'll give the Lone Druid some farm, but I mean, this is, the, this is why it's so great to have a Prophet on your team. He can always be that plus one. Actually gonna walk top, grab a haste, not TPing for that, so he holds on to the TP. Wow, look at the bottom lane. Lamb has lost almost all of his health, no points in Quash just yet. And Hannah Montana fortunately had a mana, just doing a great job, I guess, of Caustic Finale harassment. Now, even if you deny a creep, uh, it will still proc Caustic Finale as long as the debuff is on it, so that may be what we're seeing here. Still, nice job by Hannah Montana, continue the last hit effectively. Big dive up top, though! Looks like PCT got ward blocked in, but it's MMY they won! Fissure on three. It's a great fissure, but it's not enough. MMY goes down again. All four heroes up top. And now with the Prophet, maybe they'll turn this into a push. Uh, it's an option for Complexity. The one thing E-Hub could do now is push out the middle lane. That's really all King J can contribute. Uh, and it's just the versatility of the Prophet. He doesn't have to stay top. If he wants to, he can go back mid. But he's getting the early kills, and this is what Morphling needs. It's what the Venner needs as well. He's getting some levels too. And that's a great... Prophet wants to be getting as early as possible. Uh-oh, oh, oh, they're going to find QQQ at top. QQQ with the SMX. Take down Enchantress. Big test of fate. Oh, what a deny! Goes for revenge. 
Amazing deny. Well timed there. And that is a big win for Ehome, who find themselves getting a kill and as well as the hero deny. Nothing going Cole's way there in that exchange. Yeah, really not. Let's see, do we have a working gold graph this game? It looks like we do, and, well, a decent lead for the Radiant. Not outrageous, but certainly Dyer's a decent lead. In terms of experience, we are very attack. even. Both junglers sort of cancel each other out. King J already level 5, and, well, he's going to have a quick level 6. He's also getting a lot of farm. Boots already up on the hero. If he wants to go for phase, he'll have them soon. And once he gets 6, he will be a lot harder to gank. So as great as this middle lane is going, Ehome is getting a trade-off here. Uh, they're not happy about giving the Morphling this kills. You know, they're not happy about the problems the Pug is having. But Lone Druid is going to become a threat, and he's going to become a threat much more quickly. JOTP's top, and what a rune to luck into. He gets that regen, and now he's going to trot right back mid, can spam the trance again. He's actually opted the Max Nature's Call over the TP, at least for now. Uh, so he's more interested in pushing. Uh, and when he ganks, he wants to be able to turn it into something, instead of just constantly going for kills. Yeah, I think I think it's the right decision to make. If he goes top, he can make something of it. I mean, once you get one kill, the other heroes can't really defend until that hero's back, so you can really get the push going. I think maxing out the trance is the better option there, as uh, we'll see how he wants to deal with this mid lane. He's picked up a Sage's Mask, so possible early medallion, or maybe just... Actually, maybe going to be going for that uh, Urn of Shadows, which uh, he does have that one Gauntlet of Strength for. Although seeing on 550 gold now, it looks like we may be seeing a fast medallion for Gio, and then really start to get aggressive and gank from top lane. Ix might in the river. Seeing a bit of a duel with Chen and some of his creeps as Fluff and Ix Mike. And they head back towards top, or at least to try to, but this creeps is preventing Ix Mike from getting on through. Uh, this is what I love to see. Both junglers in the same jungle, the elaborate dance constantly, <laughs> that chance to steal the opponent's creeps. It's just so cheeky. Uh, and TC charging in. He's got power treads. Prophet's going to TP it. Where is he TP'd exactly? Looks like they want PCT. They're going to catch him out. Force not the best Fisher. He only hits the Enchantress, and now PCT is dead. Decrepify, that'll only make the waveform stronger, but TC patiently holding on to it. They're gonna get the kill, and now he's got the waveform up. They can look to dive MMY, fluff and stuff, healing up. Will they actually chase? No, they find QQQ. QQQ gets the kill on Benno just barely, and all that Ehome can do is look for the trade. King J pushing mid, but now it looks like the tower top is in a lot of trouble. Huge army of tree ants up from JO. Look at MMY, <laughs> he's gonna make a long trip around the world, all the way from the tower back down the river. Looks like he should get away. <laughs> well, some big test of fates coming out from this Chen. I've got to say that was reaching near max damage, but he gets gets himself another kill. So, uh, still, it's going okay for Ehum. They're not trading for nothing, but I feel like they haven't really done all that well at this bottom lane. Sanking is actually outlast hitting the Invoker. 25 creep kills to Invoker's 21. And Sanking with a bottle and boot. He can pick up an arcane arcane boots as well fairly soon. He's sitting on 400 gold. He's really doing well at bottom lane. Now with an epicenter, he may even just pick up a TP and try to come help out one of these other lanes as well. Uh, take maybe top by surprise. Oh, that epicenter could be absolutely devastating. Look at the pug, a level three, and he's supposed to be farming in this lane, but they've been constantly picking him off. The jungle antics continue. Wildkin summoning a tornado, just trying to hunt down this Earthshaker. PCT with the boots, <laughs> look at the damage he's taking, so obnoxious to deal with. And Chen actually is going to look to kill that one off. Uh, QQQ has had enough of these shenanigans. Uh, the, the big bright spot for Ehome right now is definitely the Lone Druid. King J phase boots up 900 gold in the bank. If he wants that relic, could maybe have it around the 15 minute mark, but that's assuming he doesn't die. And the other point I'll make, you talked about Sam can get a lot of farm bottom. Lambs actually, or Lambs actually opted for early Forge Spirits. Normally very good at harassing. Burrow Strike in the start. Epicenter to follow. Profit all bouncing through. Lamb walking away. The face boots might keep him safe. In fact, Hannah Montana out of mana. Now the Cold Snap comes through. Will it be enough damage? I'm not sure it will. Profit TP in somewhere. No, just thinking about it from the looks of it. Bottom lane. He's gone on land at bottom oh, lane. Invoker's actually found himself in a bad position. Invoker and Sankin straight at hit. Sankin was actually almost going to go down, but... Oh, he is going to go down! Up. Oh, man. What? Nature and this is on US West, by the way, so I don't think that was like... QQQ gets caught out as well. And uh, he goes <laughs> down again. Aggression all over the map, but it just feels like complexity or outmaneuvering Ehome. And it really goes back to the profit. The main reason they got the start, and the main reason they continue to win these small engagements. I'm, I'm still shaking my head at Hannah Montana. He was... Uh... Doing something out of the ordinary there. He didn't even need to go back in. The kill was already got, but he was still running forward and then just tanking a few too many creeps. But uh, we all make mistakes. Uh, it we happens. We all have those embarrassing moments. And uh, unfortunately for Hannah, he's got caught in front of all you guys. So uh, <laughs> go easy on him. Go easy on him. 
you know what? I, I, I actually was trying to say this. Okay, I think I have a chance now. If no, nope, they're not even going to give me a moment to breathe. The Caustic Finale Horizon continues. Maybe it's the lag. I'm not sure what's going on with Lamb, but he's letting Sand King get all sorts of auto attacks off. Uh, but he's gone for Exhort, Lamb has, and yet we haven't seen a single Sunstrike yet this game. At least I haven't noticed one. If we have teleported for profit, they want the they want MMY again, who's level five, but still very under leveled. All he's got is boots. Only one point in the Nether Ward. Doesn't have been maxed out blast yet. This is not the reason they picked up Pug, though. They wanted him to get early points of blast, look to push the towers. Fisher is gonna block fluff and stuff away, keeping everyone safe for the moment. But Ehomor very much on the back foot. TC also getting a lot of farm. Treads up TP in again for profit. They want QQQ. Buff and stuff in the front lines along with J.O. The urn charge coming out. QQQ goes down again. And as great as that Fissure was at stopping the first round, it's just not enough. Profit bypasses that line of defense, finds the next layer, and gets another pick off. And I thought we had a player disconnecting there. Now complexity. I, you know, guys, the one thing I'll say is I'm a little surprised they haven't gotten this top tier one yet. They have gotten at least four or five kills here. Normally the tower would be dead by now. But remarkably, Ehom mm, have matched the whole yeah, especially with Yeah, that. I mean, proper TP. It comes, I mean, these heroes are fairly low level. Pugnant, yes, they get back quickly, and one fissure can ruin it. One blast can, or one blast combined with it. And then you've got the Chen. You can send creeps in, can help tank up the creep wave a bit. They've got their options to defend it. And now we see that it is going to go down, but a bit of a trade attempt going in on, on at mid as Team Jake trying to get the T1 tower. And he's actually looking pretty fine. He's sitting on 2k gold with 63 creep kills. And we're just 10 minutes in there. Here we go, Sprout. Is it going to come? Uh, no, he Jake got fog. Managed to just get away. It is nighttime. I think the fog of war blocked that one. And Lamb continues to just sit bottom and farm as action happens all over the map. Fluff and stuff. Oh, no meds land. And I believe we're finally going to see it going to Ehome's way. Will we, though? Decrep, Blast, Sunstrike, not going to hit. Everybody from Ehome is participating some way in this fight. I expect Gale's on two. Great Gale from him. Lone Druid forced to go into that ultimate form. And, well, Morphling's just farming top through all this. But in the end, nobody dies. It's that Enchantress. Fluff and stuff is too damn tanky. Three points in nature attendance. Plus, I believe that was a full charge wand. Able to instantly burst them up to full health and keep them alive. Yeah, now we'll we'll see where Cole want to go with this at the moment. Uh, I feel Geo, I mean, he's actually gone for the Minus, so we're not going to be seeing a very... I mean, we saw Zhao Wei go for that fast mech is, it, it before the Minus, and that's something I thought Geo might opt for here, as they are being very aggressive, going for a lot of kills, and that's added survivability. Could really help out the team, but maybe they're just going to go for the mech on Fluff, like he went for last game, but at the moment, Geo with the Minus up is going to look to accelerate his farm rate, and he needs to do that if he wants to sort of compete with King J in the mid to late game, I feel. Well, again, he's got backup. You know, it's not just J.O.S. to carry this. He's got the Sand Fane for great team fight, great initiation, and the Morphling to do a lot of damage. And don't underestimate Enchantress either. Once she gets Impetus, she can hit quite a bit. We've seen Puppy do it so many times before, dealing crazy damage with that early Aghanim. Doesn't look like there's nearly as much farm on Fluff. This is more of a support of Enchant. But nonetheless, there is a backup lane here for Complexity. I love the Midas pickup just because it fits in so well with Complexity's style. They don't necessarily want to try and win the game early. They'd like to get to a point where they have a big lead. QQQ gets discovered in his own jungle. TPM from Prophet. Once again, he will die. This Chen ult just never going to be gotten at the rate he keeps on dying. Uh, and the bottom lane, meanwhile, action happening there as well. Lamb dies again. Complexity just finding the openings everywhere on the map. Great play from them. And they, fall, they pull further and further ahead. Huge gold lead. Huge experience lead, and they've got the late game to boot. It's looking good for Complexity right now, gods. It really is. Oh yeah, despite a small mistake here or there, I just feel the overall strategy and execution this game is, uh, it's hitting the right nails, and it is working for Complexity. TC at top, he's farming well, he's got 71 creep kills. The only real concern is going to be this lone druid, I feel. When he gets up that relic and radiance, that's when Ehome are going to look to group up and just take down towers together. They haven't actually got a mech though at this point. They're going to need to get that mech up on either Pugna or the Chen. Pugna's gone for the double bracer just to tank up as much as possible. Chen, well, he's pretty poor. Yeah, so they're they... going to need to start getting up some of these items. Where, Where is the money going to come from? I mean, Lone Druid is the only hero getting farm and he is going for Radiance. So who's going to get that mech? And by the time they do, is will it be too late? It kind of feels like it will right now. Uh, you know, you pointed out the Chen yeah. that doesn't have much farm. He's died a lot. The Pugna, of course, that's struggling as well. Earthshaker's never going to get that kind of farm in a game like this. And I guess the Invoker could, but Lamb's opted for drums and phase boots. That's his item build. He could go back for a mech. It's normally not what you see out of Exhort Invoker, but someone's got to get it. They really need that heal versus all this AoE. Yeah, I think we're just going to be seeing a late mech here. Invoker's probably just want to transition to that 4-staff, and 
whether it's Chen or the Pugna, they're gonna they're gonna have to get those T1 towers at top and bottom. That'll give them a quick jump to their gold and allow them to get that neck up a bit quicker, but they can't really do that safely um, at the moment. I mean, they want that Radiance up. They've got the Relic now. This is a wow. 13 and a half minute Relic. And a phase that is Oh boy. Yeah, that is fast. He did not he did not rush this as fast as he can. He went to the sort of conventional build, which is getting phase boots on your hero for the added survivability and uh, the, the movement you get. And uh, it is going to be King J looking to take his team, looking to start get some towers and really carry them because the rest of his team are struggling. Yeah, and, well, it's not only the it's not only the silver or the lone juror that's getting that farm. TC has thirty three hundred gold. If he wants to go ethereal blade, which it could be fantastic this game. Chen, Pugna, Earthshaker, even the Invoker, pretty low HP pools, and a lot of other nukes to stack up on top of that. If he wants it, he can have it fast, and it looks like that's the direction he will be headed. Could be a butterfly, but I believe this will be a er, very early Ethereum Blade, and that could be big trouble. Even more reason why you need that mech, you want the pipe as well. A, a pipe is another item they really need. It's not just the mech. It's so much bur burst nuke damage the episode. Well, not burst, but over time, I should say. Initiation on KJ. They want to deny this Radiance. Will they get it? Profit ult bounces through. Look at the magic damage on KJ, and he just cannot survive. Chen Hill even used, I think it's a, it might have been a gank top. No, they just want to save the low druid. They want TC, will they get him? He actually already used waveform. MMY trying to block the retreat, put the waveform out, and you just can't kill this Morphling. It's not the same story for the Lone Druid. And he's going for this rush ethereal blade. Um, I think this is I think this will work just because of how underfarmed and poor these heroes are on the dire oh, yeah. side. I mean, even the Invoker. ES Chen Pugna are gonna be food. Pugna's going for a double bracer. Well, he's still seeing on only 9 or HP. He doesn't have great strength game. And he's still squishy. Uh, you've got the Invoker, who's I mean, he's over 1k HP, but he's not all that. He's not a high level. He has gone for some points in class, which will give him a boost to his strength. But still, he's another fairly squishy hero, and it's only really the lone druid who'll be hard to take down with that shotgun. And that's when he's in ulti form. And it's still possible. I mean, with with a nuke or two, with a sand king stun follow, followed up with a couple right clicks, and he will go down. So all these heroes will be very squishy to this fast ethereal that TC is going to have. Yeah, don't for, don't forget. It's not just about the damage he can do. It also is a great defensive tool. You can use the ethereal blade on the spirit bear, and it will still do the radiance burn, but it will not be able to auto attack. And this early in the game, that spirit bear hits very very hard. So having that defensive capability, just one more benefit. We'll most likely see him use on heroes, but. The point is that it is a very versatile item. It's not just the shotgun. Uh, it's also a bit of a brick wall too to deal with. So the complexity looking very strong. And this is this is in their wheelhouse. This is how they like to play gods. They want to split push. They want to farm. They don't want to have too many big team fights Ooh, early shit. until they feel comfortable. Once TC gets the farm up, then they'll be aggressive. But for now, complexity is just spreading the field and profit morphling Sankey, the best heroes in the business to do that. Yeah, and if, if there is any aggression, it'll just be looking for like a single pick off, like we saw in King J. They won't go for those big team fights as of yet. Uh, they'll wait for the Ethereal Blade and they'll wait to have the right combo and positioning. I mean, they've got the level 2 ulti on Sanking, so they may look for some kills. I don't think they need to find a big team, team fight. Even if they just get a, a solo kill with Epicenter at this point, it's worth it. You buy more space for Morphling the farm. You're just creating room and applying more pressure. Sand King in a perfect position at uh -oh. top. I'm expecting TP's up, TP's up top, and I'm expecting a big team IP for complexity. Here we go. First TP, second TP. Uh oh. Uh oh, uh -oh are the, this is the right pair of words. Epicenter channeling. Blinking from Hannah Montana. Hits on three heroes. Not the best ult, but quite solid. Will it be enough? Morphly waves in. The Venomancer on top of it. Sunstrike follows through. Complexity doing a lot of damage, but not getting quite as many pickoffs. King J gets trapped, he will go down, and that means no Relic in this fight. No Spirit Bear. Actually, it could have been a lot worse for Ehum. The Chen Hill really helped. That was without a pipe or a mech, but it's not over yet. Prophet TP's in. Jo taking a lot of damage. Immediate double TP out. Defensive Fissure. Will they be able to get PCT? A third kill would help a lot, but no, he escapes as well. So, you know, gods, considering how bad it looked, that was about as well as you could have expected to go for Ehum. Yeah, I mean, if, if they'd gone for the uh, this, the full five on push on that town, all sort of tanked up the epicenter, positioning was actually really good there. It was so that Hannah Montana, I mean, he missed a couple of the pulses. He did manage to end up getting two or three heroes with the epicenter, but the stun only hit one hero, so it wasn't the best ult team. It wasn't, I mean, it wasn't anything to do with Hannah Montana. It was just the positioning of Ehon. Right. Uh, they were positioned near the river, and they knew there was nowhere that Sanking could come from and hit a, a full epicenter on them. So 
Ehome do lose the fight. With that said, don't get me wrong. Ehome lost the fight, and they uh, well, they're actually going to take out Hannah Montana. Wow. He gets caught in no man's land. Not the best game for Hannah Montana, I have to say. Although he has had um, some some nice plays, he's made some questionable ones as well. But complexity is still in a good position here. Yeah, you know, particularly that one point where he ran into the creeps, could have escaped there. Maybe it's lag, you know, who knows what the reason is. But overall, he's doing what he needs to do for his team. He's initiating, uh, he's providing the threat of that blink stun, and even if he dies here or there, it's still freeing up a lot of space for TC to get big, as well as J.O. And speaking of J.O., Mech's been up for a while, Midas as well, and the urn. A lot of cheap early game items, but on top of that, 1500 gold. So, if he wants this scythe of ice, most likely will be the next pickup. He's not all that far off of it. At the rate he's farming, maybe you can see it at the 25 minute mark or so. Maybe a bit sooner if they get some kills or towers. And Well, he's got a lot of room to farm. All of the outer towers for Ehome are now knocked down. And what's the result? They five-man jungle. They can't really leave, enter the lane safely. N not enough vision on the map and not enough map control to be able to do so. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, the, the beauty of having all this map control. We do see, I mean, the Ehome, they've got some wards up. Uh, with that said, they are managing to push out the lanes and sort of control the area of where Complexity can just sort of freely farm and just basically not have to worry about too much about anything. Geo, he's getting farmed on this proper. He's got 2.2k gold. May see an ultimate orb into that sheep stick. Into that sheep stick. Although lately we've been seeing even just straight acronym scepters just to keep the keep the ulti spam up. Not so much spam. It's I, don't, I feel spam is the wrong word. It basically implies you're using it whenever possible. You want to use it when you're maximizing the number of heroes you're hitting, as well as when you're looking to actually pressure the lanes properly, not just because you feel like farming and hitting some more creeps. So we'll see wh where he wants to go for. At the moment, E home. They need to catch up a bit. Levels farm. It's just not there, and it's not really working for them. I feel. Yeah, I mean, if the gold graph tells a sad tale. <laughs> it's over 10k at this point. Experience is well, a big lead, and well, Morphling's had his Ethereal Blade now for a while, and 1600 gold in the bank. I am curious, what will TC go for next? Will he go for more aggression, more damage? Maybe a Manta style? It's a great thing to have versus Lone Druid. I feel like the only way we're going to see this Morphling die is if he gets chain stunned by the Earthshaker and entangled the boot. And even if you get entangled, you can wave away. But Manta can remove that. So if TC wants a little bit of utility, Manta's a great choice. Of course, we've seen BKB be very effective. Uh, but he doesn't really have to initiate. They already have the Sand King for that. So a lot of options open for TC, as well as a lot of space to farm. Pressuring the top lane by himself well past the tier 1. In fact, they don't even have a tier 1, but he's in between where the tier 1 and tier 2 would be. And Ehome can't do anything. They This is the one downside to Ehome's lineup. They just don't have any great gankers. I mean, they have good push. But how are they actually going to pick a hero up, especially this Morphling? I just don't see it happening. Yeah, they were relying on this sort of 20 to 25 minute push. And that's where they're, they're at that point now. It's 21 minutes in. This is where they want to be pushing down towns one by one, but... With their current state, their current I mean, gold deficit, which basically is reflected in their items, oh, yeah, Chen, he's down. only just got enough gold for a mech. We're seeing a 21 minute mech. I mean, it's it's a it's a late mech, but the bigger issue is his deaths, his just general uh, being a bit of a low level and just not having much of a positive impact. And this is where Ehome, if they had a good early game, if they hadn't given up those kills and towers, they would be looking to take down towers one by one. But it just hasn't happened with Sankin winning fairly well at bottom lane. Hannah Montana, he had an invis, he opts for the Burrow Strike, reveals himself. Will he be able to get off that big epicenter now? Echo Slam, out of the Nether Ward, actually zaps him. He can't blink, one second to go, but almost the entire ult wasted. It doesn't matter from the looks of it. Venomancer ult doing a lot of damage. Look at the impetuses from a Fluff and stuff, just ripping through the enemy team, and Morphling joins the fight. Actually hasn't got a kill just yet, and now he's getting blasted. He's running pretty low in mana. King J, though, on the back foot, sprouted up. <laughs> J.O. overextending from the looks of it, in a bit of trouble, that high armor from the mech helping to keep him alive. Man, that nether ward bailed out Ehome big time there. Delaying the blink, wasting a few extra pulses. Sunstrike onto J.O. It's gonna hit even with the delay. Great Sunstrike there. And they get a much needed to kill, killing off the Prophet. Two for two with this kind of deficit. Great fight for, or for Ehome. Yeah, and they killed a couple key heroes, both Sankey and Prophet. Uh, Invoke, I mean, he gets some more farm, gets some more, himself some more XP, and he's uh, getting himself up to a reasonable point. He's level 13 now. He probably wants to get a few more points in Wex to increase the range of some of those AoE spells, which he's, he may have to start using to defend and uh, just to deal with some additional burst DPS in this fight. We'll see what route he wants to take here. Uh, ES going for braces, not even worrying about a blink dagger. Pugna, where are you at? Four stuff is up there. 
I mean, the item progression, it's it's there for E-Home, but it, it's not very good is basically the best way of putting it. I mean, they are getting some items up. We'll see Lone Druid maybe heading towards a pipe. He's got the cloak. It could just be a cloak on its own, but uh, pipe is sometimes a common second item on, on the Lone Druid, especially if you feel an Assault Crest won't be all that useful. And I feel this is one of those games. Assault Crest won't really help when they're being so much on the defensive against all this magic damage. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm just not sure there's an item that can really turn this one around for Ehome, like you're pointing out. Hannah Montana has a veil up. A big damage for him if he can get it off. Radiant's gonna drive him back, and they might claim the tier one bottom. Catching Hannah Montana out, he still can't use that blink because of the Radiant Spirit. No, Ehome's not gonna go for him. They're gonna let him escape if he wants to do so, and in the end, he TPs back to the tier two right as the cavalry arrives. No, he cancels the TP. He's gonna stick around. Epicenter's back up. This could be a great fight. For complexity if they can find the openings, but for now Eho maneuvering around, they see TC, they want to go on him. TC has the ultimate aura up, maybe going for the Manta style, probably not a Lincoln Spear this late. Could be the Eye of Skadi as well, but either way, he gets netted in place. Will they actually go on him? Both teams sort of posturing for position, but nobody ready to commit just yet. Uh, and it looks like in the end, Ehome get the tier 1 and they back off, so another win for them. They get some gold. Yeah, both teams just poking, and uh, Ehome not going to commit. There's not much of a need for them to commit, especially when they're this far behind. They don't know how many heroes are going to be there, and with Prophet being a bit of a, a wild card, they know he can either split push, he can come to the fight, provide that mech, and then provide some additional DPS. It's just Ehome not in their interest, even though they want that sort of that push around now. They're not going to be an amazing late-game force, but this is a better option. They smoke. They could go for a kill, but they're going to go into the Roche pit, and I don't think Complexity realize this. They've avoided the Observer Ward, and there we go. Yeah, they're going to get a free Roche in, and Complexity not reacting at all. At least not yet. Ix Mike, oh, he's heading towards the pit. Prophet teeping to the small camp. Ix Mike is going to scout this, but it's too late. Roshan is down, and Venomancer may suicide himself for the cause. Yeah, he loses a gen there. That was not a trade Ix Mike wanted to make. Yeah, the, the team was just a few seconds too late to arrive. I mean, I love the idea, though. The Gil and the ult hitting almost everyone. It did a lot of damage. The Prophet ult bouncing through. The thing they need to make that fight work is the Sand King there. Not just with the Epi, the Blink, the Stun, but also that Veil of Discord. It makes everything hit a lot harder. And, well, very nice kind of sneaky ninja-style play coming out from Ehome. This is what you have to do when you're behind like this. you got to get creative and... I guess, guys, what can they do from here on out? Is there anything else they could do to continue to be creative? Well, I just, I mean, look, what, what there was that smoke in the Roche, and this is one of those times where, I mean, not often do I, I mean, when you're behind, obviously, going for those big, I mean, complexity sort of trade my smoke gang to me, it's nice, but they're also, if it's done incorrectly, is a very obvious, and as a result, you fall further behind if you don't actually get those kills. But this is one of those times where I feel they can work, especially with a low druid, because he can be pushing those lanes with his bear, and then you go elsewhere, looking for that smoking, you can recall the bear in, and then look to get a kill, and then transition into a push. That's what they have to do. They can't just get a single kill. Getting a single pick off isn't going to help you. They need either to get a pick off and turn it into a team fight, or get a pick off and turn it into a tower off two. Well, for the moment, they are hiding pretty far back, and again, it's these early towers being knocked down. It's just not safe for Ehome. They also don't have wards up at the moment, and that's something they really need to do, is place those wards. One thing I have to point out is King J is pretty behind in levels. He's only 13, and in fact, the whole of Ehome is, and it's just because they can't really farm right now. He had that really early relic, the great farm to start, and it's not even that he's dying all that much. King J is currently only 0-2. It's just the fact that he can't enter the lanes. A lot of his creeps are just the bear farming with the Radiance Bird, and he's not actually there to get the experience, and at this point, Lone Druid, he doesn't need levels too badly, but you really would like to get that level 3 ultimate form for the extra HP and armor to work with, so hopefully he can do that soon. Yeah, it's not what I expected, and I mean, the level difference is going to really hurt. Uh, probably, I mean, the gold difference, I mean, it's sort of stabilized. I mean, there's still a big lead, 12k, but I feel the levels at the moment is probably the bigger thing, whereas on the right side, most series have their key levels. We've got the level 3 Prophet Ultimate, we'll see Sankin getting a level 3 Ultimate in the next couple of minutes, I imagine. Venno, still just level 10, same thing Chantress, they probably want their level 2 ultis, but the Dying team who are... Uh, Somewhat falling behind. I mean, a level 8 ES, uh, even the Pugna, just level, I mean, level 11, he's just not looking to have had much of an impact so far. He's been spending a lot of time farming. It reminds me of the Queen of Pain from last time. A lot of time farming, not too much involvement in the actual team fights. And it's not that he doesn't want to participate, there's just no room. Well, smoke yeah. ganks were a possibility. Here we see it. The bear indeed pushing out bottom with the Radiance Bird. Treant's running away, desperately trying to survive. Arrows drawn all over the map. 
it's a big investment. This is a lot of time they're not farming. Uh, they're not pushing out the lanes. And the lanes will push in even with the bear trying to slow down bottom. But they find Hannah Montana. Great blink away. Will that put an end to the gank? What a cold snap. I'm surprised the vision. Burrow strike to the low ground. Hannah Montana is just too shifty. And he escapes. So a wasted opportunity for Ehome. They had to make something happen. And since it fails, what do we see from complexity? J.O. pushes in on the top. IX Mike does some great dewarding with the haste rune. Uh, and he's got another, himself another gem. 1,400 gold into that vision, I believe. Unless he recovered the original, uh, which I don't think he did. But no. either way, a failed smoke gank, and it, it pushes things back even further in complexity's favor. Well, my, my gem senses weren't tingling, but I did remember them killing that last gem. So it looks like it's a new gem for IX Mike. And uh, I like this item build with the medallion, the gem, just getting up these sort of core, you, core support yeah, items, right? especially for a Venomancer. He's one of the best heroes to get a gem on because you have the Plague Ward to help scout things out and D Ward from relative safety. Uh, so we'll see him get the map control back up for the complexity side. There's a few wards up there to D Ward, most notably, noticeably the one just sitting there in the middle lane, which you may notice in just a second as he is swinging back towards that direction. E home. They've gotten a bit passive again. I don't blame them. I mean, they're not really in a position to make too much happen. And while they don't want to drag it out too late, they want to at least get up an item here or there and get a few more levels and really just wait and make sure they are getting the best fight possible. Well, the one thing that Complexity might be waiting for is for this Aegis to expire. How much time does it have to go? Uh, still about five minutes. So we are a ways off from that expiring. But if Complexity want to go late, I mean, with this kind of a lead, they really should be able to take this in the late game. Still, like you said, what else can Ehome do? They tried the smoke gank, that didn't work. They ninja the Roshan, and that was great. But they can't seem to really get enough creep momentum going. It goes back to the Prophet, and the Morphling, and the Sand King. All three of these constantly split pushing. And even though Ehome want to get that momentum going, they just can't get it done. It's a push lineup yeah, they can't I mean, push. I, 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 absolutely, I have to agree with you. And it, I mean, it comes down to that poor early game start they had. I mean, they just fell behind too much uh, early on, and... They've got a lineup that isn't really built for catching up. It's built for sort of being ahead and then getting further ahead or just staying ahead. It's not really built for falling behind and then starting some sort of a comeback. It's it's just meant to be there and be competing from the start. And we'll see Complexity just looking to punish the fact that their opponents just do not have the mobility around the map to sort of uh, catch up on farm. Not to mention they they're they're a sort of five man pushing unit. That's how they that's why they push is strong. Whereas Complexity can move around, split push with profit. Sankey as well doing a bit of it top lane and Morphling great at it as well. Morphling now finishing off this Eye of Scotty. Uh oh, and PCT just melts there to the Ethereal Blade combat. Sprout gonna miss on MMY, but I feel like he might be dead anyway. Uh, TP should be cloned down the jail fairly soon. Sprout or TP excuse me, four step onto the low ground to get away. Meanwhile, Lamb pushing out the top. Still with this kill, uh, you know, it's the thing. The funny thing about it is, normally if you pick off a hero like Earthshaker Gods, you can go push, but this is a level 9 Earthshaker, so he's right back to life. TP on the top, Sprout to follow, Epi on to Lamb, and Lamb is not getting out of this one, I don't think, but Hannah Montana taking a lot of damage. The Chen heal maybe turning things around, the Meteor flies up, but Lamb dropping low, and it looks like the retreat path will be cut off. Uh, Burrow Strike actually not going to hit, I think I heard one of the back lines. Lamb still running for his life. Will he really escape from this? I would be shocked if he did. TC wants QQQ, drops the shotgun, JOTP far ahead in deep in enemy territory. They will get the pickoff, and Lamb it hit it in Ghost Walk. It looks like he will be able to escape. Actually, is he going to try and stop Hannah Montana? No, he won't risk it. Now with the Chen dead and the heal used up, maybe this is Complexity's moment. Yeah, com Complexity can look to uh, find a bit of an opening here. Yes. Looks like he picked up a Saf Wizard. We'll be going straight for that four Saf. He's not going for a Blink Dag. I think this is an alright decision. Um, it will give him a bit more utility. He can help out his teammates uh, as well as still use it as a semi initiation. Not as great as the Blink Dagger. Harder to control and also not as precise. But for the most part, it is very, very useful for escaping. Especially, I mean, you've got the Radiance on the Scylla Bear, which is going to make it very hard to get off a Blink Ulti, anyways. Well, Ehome are trying to force the issue now. They group up mid. They're gonna go for the push. Manta style. Oh no, that was an illusion rune used. TC dropping very low, actually. Is he agility morphing by mistake? Oh, he gets away. Just barely know he was strength morphing, at least at the end there. Gets up onto the high ground. Wow, that was a lot of burst damage by Eho. Mech is gonna heal back up. Replicates the teammate. Now he's gonna TP back to base. He'll be right back in the fight. And Hanamount's out of pressing in top. He's got the level 3 ultimate now, just hit 16. And again, Ehome, they want to push. They even had a great start to the fight, forcing the Morphly Replicate out, almost killing him. But now they have to back. Complexity can stall this all day. 
Yeah, man. Every now and then, EMC to have a sign of life, they'll do something good, but then they'll just fall back and then get back into this thing to run. And it's it's not. I mean, they're, they're trying to make things happen. They're just falling far behind, and there we're going to see them get further behind, especially if they lose land. I mean, he's being sent back. He can't see Ghost Walk. Wow. He should be okay. Defensive Fissure even being used. And they just didn't lock him down quick enough. They need that stun lock. It just wasn't there. Great defensive play by Eom. I have to say, this is an Arshaker who's really struggled all game, as well as a Chen. They got picked off a lot, but they've still done a decent job of keep protecting their team, keeping them alive, especially considering the deficit. So you have to credit Eom for that. But I'm not. I'm just not sure if they can overcome this deficit. It feels like eventually Complexity will have all the items they need, and then they're going to push. I mean, even this Enchantress, Fluff earlier had almost nothing. Just Boots and a, a Bracer, and now look at him. Treads, Agate of Scepter, Drum of Endurance. Compare that to the Chen. Just a mech and a pair of boots. That's pretty much it. Very far behind. Of course, the carry heroes are even farther ahead. Yeah, going to love how it's a talent hero that they can just turn things around for a support hero. Really boost up their gold. And that's what ES really needs. I mean, get a couple of T3 towers, and ES will suddenly be very close to that four star that he wants. King J, I mean, he's got the Vlad. Has he picked up anything else? A Hyperstone, or he's got the Hyperstone on his bear. So he's. He is going to be going for the Assault Crest, not finishing off the pipe for his team. Uh, deciding Chen with the mech. Pugna, actually, Pugna is building the pipe for his team, only a couple hundred gold away. So we'll see pipe and mech on the dire side. It is already 34 minutes in, so this isn't like that really fast pipe mech and just going for a bit of a cheese push. This is just a late game, trying to give their team as much survivability as possible. And whether or not it's going to be enough, we'll have to wait and see. But right now, complexity with a big farm lead, so it might not be enough for him. Yeah, another concern is, can he actually get that pipe off? I mean, you've got Chen to try and help him, but if Morphling hits his combo, especially if the Scythe of Vice from the Prophet is used, they could easily pick either the Chen or the Pugna off before they can use those items. And as important as those items are, you know, getting them off, they're not useful unless you get them off. So to me, that's a concern for Ehum. Position is going to be crucial for them in these next fights. And it's really hard to have good position up against a Prophet, a Sanke with a Blink, a Morphling. Of course, we know how mobile he is. It's a lot of mobility for Complexity. They're gonna find Hannah Montana. He gets caught out. He can't blink. He is being burnt, but they just can't chase. Morphling TC charging in. Prepared for kill and the TPN for the Prophet as well. King J spots it. He's gonna retreat. Will Complexity give chase? Looks like they might. TC gets entangled. TC taking a decent amount of damage. King J man fight here breaking out. Wants to go toe to toe. The net onto Jo. Jo deep in back of the enemy lines. He will drop really quickly. Epi and the BKB. Hannah Montana barely hitting anything with that though. And it looks like Eho might get the pick and survive. PCT runs back in. The Hex going on to TC. Lamb has picked up a sight device. Will they get TC? No, they just can't bring him down. So close and yet so far. Fluff and stuff as well. The four snap in. One more auto type will do it. Mega kill for Lamb. Is Eho really winning this team fight, gods? Or are my eyes deceiving me? Oh I expect dies as well. How in God's name do they win that? They're down, they're down almost 20k gold right now. And they're up against a Morphling. Holy crap. What? And they... That, I mean, that was... It was kind of close, but really. I mean, that was just cool. I mean, they even bought back on the Prophet. They try to make something happen. They just didn't use their items to effect in that fight. It was complex. It was like they didn't have a hex on the Prophet. I mean, the Morphling, I mean, he didn't really have much of an impact there. He didn't get too much right to damage. He was just on the back foot for the whole fight. So, I mean, the gold damage was made up for by the fact that Morphling wasn't right clicking anyone. So, the Scarni wasn't really doing much. Oh, wasn't man. Really cheap. And now, Roach are going to go to Eho. And they have a flags okay. up. They're very close to that Assault Curse. I believe there's some components on the current. No, actually, there's not. Okay, so they're a bit off of that. But again, the Aegis coming their way. And well, whenever you win a big team fight like that, Roshan you might not catch up mass. Oh, King J forgets the Aegis goes back for it. Yeah, you definitely want to take that one with you, buddy. But uh, I, I mean, it's one of these things where, yeah, you might not catch up completely in terms of gold. But with experience, there's this rubber band effect. If, you're, if you ever win a fight when you're down like this, you come roaring back into the game. And Urshaker finally getting close to that level 2 ultimate. He might even have his force staff fairly soon. Eh, he's still a bit away from that. I'm not going to get too ambitious here. But the sight of Vice on Lamb, I feel that was one of the real difference makers there. He got a couple of key pickoffs and drove the Morphling back single-handedly. You know, it might be time for TC to continue, consider a BKB because it feels like he's not able to right-click in these fights. And if Morphly can't right click, that's a lot of his potential down the drain. And there's there's a reason these Chinese teams love to go the BKB into Scotty, and then even I mean they'll pick up the Ethereal Blade later often. It's an item that you still can pick up as long as you don't. I mean, getting it sort of 60 plus minutes in the game, not great, but as long as you're getting it to around the 40, 45 minute mark, it's still very effective. 
but they want the BKB, they want the survivability, and they want the assurance that Morphling can have an impact on team fights. Without the BKB, you just simply do not have that assurance. And that's something which I, I fully agree. He needs a BKB this game. He's going for the Mantis Arm. I mean, if he gets farmed enough, it might not matter as a BKB. He may just have to position himself so that it doesn't matter. But here we go. Here's that mid-game push, although we are now 40 minutes into the game. And uh, it is Ehon going together as fine towards the middle lane. But here we go. Split push at top, coming by Prophet and Sanking. And basically, Ehon are going to have to maybe go for a bit of a trade here. They are trading at a fairly efficient rate, but this is actually looking to be a bit of a rax trade, if anything. So oh, we'll see we how things shape out, but I, I'm not sure. I mean, bottom lane should be able to get defended here. As long as Ehome get mid racks, then TP home. They're TPing already. They're going to only get the melee racks, and they've lost their top racks. They need to stay bottom. They're losing bottom melee barracks as well. TC, the shotgun, actually preventing him from racks the racks. He's still going for the racks. Fizia, they need more stun. The sheep, the egg. That the Rax is still alive. They take out TC. Plus, right clicking the Rax for dear life. In goes Prophet, practically suiciding for this Rax. Sprouts himself, TPing home. Is there a stun? Yes, there is. TP cancelled. GTO has suicide for the Rax, but that is well worth it. And his Treants, they couldn't maybe get the top range Rax as we do see Prophet and Enchantress both going down. He should probably get top. They don't want to lose a range Rax for nothing. Those range Rax is. Contrary to popular opinions, range racks do matter. I'm a firm believer of that, although they are going to throw it away because Ehome, they're going all mid. They want to end this game, I feel, or at least get another set of racks, but they can't. With the tier 2 towers, bottom and top, they've only got the throne to go towards, and I don't see them getting a throne here. Wow, what a fight. Gods, I wish you could have seen my face because I had the most shit-eating grin you will ever see. Just such an exciting trade there. In the end, I think it does favor complexity, but here we go. All in for the throne, Ehome is. If they lose this fight, if they don't get the throne inside, they will lose the game. Epicenter, pretty good one. They won King J. Remember, he has the Aegis, but he will come back in range form. Be a lot easier to bring down. Hannah Montana getting burst down. Actually, the BKB keeping him alive into the melee form. King J goes. They don't focus him down in time. TC fishing for an opening. Not going to find it. Meanwhile, top lane pushing in. Bottom lane is fine, though. Scylla Bear's bear is going to go down. No spear bear. Uh-oh. This is trouble here for Eho. Waveform in from TC. TC wants the kills. The adaptive strike. Looks like they're going to get one pick off buybacks galore. Even if you buy back on Lone Druid, though, it's going to take you a while to enter the fight. Sorry, it wasn't him that bought back. It was the Sand King, actually, and TC seems to be a bit out of hand. It was a gambit by Ehome, but dare I say, I don't think it's paid off. No, I mean, they're still in this game. It's not over, but it's not looking good. And now with Prophet just going for that back, losing that fight. I don't think, I think after they defended their base, they should have just said, okay, that was not the best trade, but let's just stay in this game. We can sit back, push out these lanes, and then look for an opening. But going all mid, that was not the opening they wanted. They actually forced some buybacks, especially once those buybacks came. That's when they should have gotten the hell out of there. They chose a fairly bad fight, and now they are paying the price, as we will see. Ehome really on the back foot here in game number two. Yeah, they are really on the back foot, but I mean, <laughs> guys, you gotta remember, Complexity has that better late game lineup. This is a team with a Pugna, a Chen, and Earthshaker. These are not heroes that scale at all. Uh, even Lone Druid generally, unless you get that, you know, mythical 12 inventory max item, he's not the best late game character. <laughs> You're up against a Prophet uh, as well as a Morphling with outrageous farm. TC's got three big items and still Complexity is, has looked at points like they're in danger of losing this game. They lost the melee racks. Uh, Ehom, they're not out of it, but I guess my one concern for them now is that Spirit Bear, even when it comes back up, there's no resummoning it. They're not going to have time for that. At least it doesn't look like it. And this is how Complexity love to win these uh, these deadlock games. They go for the smoke. Will they find anyone? Ehome play it safe. They know their opponent, and they also know their position. They are not going to leave the space. Yeah, I mean, Complexity, I mean, the smoke not going to find too much, but Complexity, they're in no rush. They've got the Rax advantage. They've got the lane momentum, and hey, they've got a Prophet. Prophet now has a Death Oak, so just go for that DPS. So if there's ever a chance to get the enemy base, he's going to be taking down uh, towers, barracks, just that much faster. And for now, Complexity, they can just maybe wait for Roshan to respawn, keep the lanes push out, keep farming out the neutrals, They'll be edging ahead, and Ehome, they recognize that threat, and they're going to go on the offensive. They've smoked up, sending the bear bottom to try and push it out with the raiding, as well as some forward spirits, and they're going to look for a pickoff. Who's it going to be? Maybe Hannah near the bottom lane. They're going to have to go through into this jungle and really have to get at least a couple of kills here, not just one on a hero like an Enchantress. Yeah, the two heroes they really want to kill, either the Sand King or the Morphling, because those heroes are very important right now to Complexity. Also, they don't have buyback ready. 
particularly Sankey, about two minutes to go. If Ehum can find him, that would be huge. Lamb to start things off. He sheeps fluff and stuff immediately. Wave for him in. Lamb dropping low to the, the shotgun, but it's not enough. He four steps away. He'll survive. TC dropping low. What an epicenter by Hannah Montana. Destroying all three, but he doesn't get the kills. And he hopes survive barely any life on anyone. Imps doing big damage. QQQ dropping low. TC waves back in. Rejoining the fight. King J goes down. Ehome getting wiped. That epicenter as well as the bail on top of it all. Man, Hannah Montana may have missed or whiffed at least on a few. But he nailed that one. And that coupled with the follow-up from the Prophet. The Morphlete. It's enough. Complexity now are prepared to go all, all bottom. and Or maybe all mid. Either way, try to get second set of Rex. Uh, completely down, the Ranger X and bottom. Actually, they're gonna go mid, and once they get that, they'll be in firm command of this game. Not sure that Eom can come back from it. Also, keep in mind the Spirit Bear is down for another 20 seconds, so even if he could buy back, he wouldn't have that. Gods, it's looking real yeah. hard for Eom right now. Oh, it is. And they put up a hell of a fight this game. I mean, they had a pretty dreadful start, especially for a line. That, I mean, they're, they're not meant to dominate the lane stage. That's always a weakness for them. They needed to have a good laning stage so that they could dominate the mid game with sort of the slow and steady push. Take out towers one by one with the Lone Druid Radiance. But they had a bad early game. And as a result, they were well behind. Lone Druid was the only one who found well and they couldn't get that push going. But they somehow turned it on, made it happen in the late game and almost, almost gave Cole a run for their money. In the end, complexity take it, but I am not disappointed at all. That means we have a Game 3 in this rather epic series. Game 2 was fantastic. Game 1 a little bit more decisive in favor of Rehome. Ehome take Game 1, complexity strike back in Game Number 2. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Beyond the Summit World Tour. Only your fifth best out of three of 24 for group stage play. I am LD of DotaCommentaries.com. Joining me, of course, is Gods, the man behind this tournament, the man funding the prize pool, and the glorious caster you have before you. But really what's glorious today is the game, so don't go anywhere, guys. Game two coming or game three, excuse me, coming your way soon. E-home versus complexity. You won't want to miss this one.